basically what you're saying is that we're going to transition from being a constitutional republic to a constitutional monarchy. Yeah, yeah. And so we are abdicating our duties and roles and responsibilities as a legislative branch. So it'll be interesting to see because in the aftermath of what happened in Virginia, you would have thought that the Democrats would have moderated their message a little bit. They didn't. They just tripled down on it. Republican leaders in Congress unveiled their commitment to America agenda. They call it a full-scale roadmap of plans should they win control of Congress in the midterms. We spoke with the executive director of the American Constitutional Rights Union, Colonel Alan West. Reminiscent this plan is of Newt Gingrich's contract with America in yes. 1994, uh, which, under which Republicans did very, very well. They Incredibly won huge, well. huge gains, huge gains in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. under that. But these are different times, different circumstances, mm -hmm. different issues. Will it work this time around? Well, the big difference between Newt Gingrich's contract with America and this commitment with America is that much the same as uh, I'm a college football nut. And when you look over at a coach, he has that laminated uh, play calling sheet. Newt Gingrich had a play call sheet, and he said that these are the pieces of legislation that we're going to pass in that first 100 days. He had everything pretty much so scripted out. As a matter of fact, he already had that legislation filed. The commitment with America does not have that type of legislative focus on it. It really talks about a lot of principles and values. It probably tries to draw a delineation mm -hmm. between Republicans and Democrats. But Gingrich could come in and much the same as a coach. He could call a play. They got it passed, and it was incredibly done. And so they did what they were supposed to do, and they talked specifically about the pieces of legislation as opposed to this commitment to America. That's really interesting. I, I was unaware of that. Um, however, there's another interesting circumstance and a difference between the 1994 years. Mm -hmm. The president at that time was Bill Clinton. Yes. And after those devastating losses in Congress, he triangulated. He pivoted. He's, yeah, he started yeah. negotiating with Republicans. Yeah. I don't think this president's willing to do that. It's not going to happen. And as a matter of fact, we saw the same thing in uh, 2010 when I came in to the Congress and we won 63 seats. That was the largest switch since World War II. And we did not see Barack Obama really pivot uh, either. Mm -hmm. So I think right now... He's, he, he's got a pen and a phone. And, I, that's and right. an executive order. As, and, and that was hard for me to understand that people were in the, in the chamber of the legislative branch would stand up and clap. Because basically what you're saying is that we're going to transition from being a constitutional republic to a constitutional monarchy. Yeah, yeah. And so we are abdicating our duties and roles and responsibilities as a legislative branch. So it'll be interesting to see because in the aftermath of what happened in Virginia, you would have thought that the Democrats would have moderated their message a little bit. They didn't. They just tripled down on it. Mm -hmm. So how does this play itself out then if, in fact, Republicans gain control of the House of Representatives and perhaps the Senate? I think that without a doubt, in spite of themselves, the Republicans will have a very successful November the 8th. And then I think once again, you will see the Democrats just demonize, disparage, and denigrate them. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening right now with Georgia Maloney, who won over in Italy. And then also you've seen conservatives win in Sweden, and now you have a new prime minister in England. And all they're doing is saying Miss Maloney is just a return of Benito Mussolini, instead of really looking at what are the policies, what are the reasons that caused her to be able to rise and come into power, just the same as 2016, when Donald Trump won the election. Well, she's a fascinating case in point because the demonization of her has been extreme. She's a fascist. She's a yes. she's, she's the heir of Benito Mussolini, as you said. But uh, so it got me curious about her background. I started mm -hmm. reading up on her. I see nothing in her background that indicates that she has any sort of lure to fascism. In fact, oh. she's she's taken steps to distance herself from it. Yet that's mm -hmm. the message that you hear across corporate media. These well, days. anyone that does not agree with the progressive left's ideological agenda is an extremist. You're a fascist and all of these things. But who are the ones that are really shutting down free speech and expression? Who are the ones going out there and castigating parents mm -hmm. going to a school board meeting as domestic terrorists? So is it fair to say that uh, should Republicans win control of Congress, you foresee just a stalemate, a standoff where mm -hmm. Democrats with their allies in the media are blaming Republicans saying, look, okay, you wanted control of the House of Representatives, you got it now, and look what's happening. 
nothing. Oh, every single day, that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, and I think that Joe Biden will continue to try to rule over us by executive orders, edicts, mandates, and decrees instead of going through the legislative process. But I think that things will slow down a little bit and they may, may be stabilized. I think the markets will look forward to that because maybe they get a little bit more predictability. But it will certainly set the stage for 2024. Republicans face another risk should they win control, and that is will, will I think it's a risk anyway, will they get bogged down in investigation and in recriminations, mm -hmm. uh, impeachment of President Joe Biden, impeachment of various officers of, of his uh, administration. Well, I think you have to be very smart about that because when you look at the left, they have been doing, the Democrats have been doing a lot of investigations on phone calls to Ukraine or Russia hoaxes and things of this nature. If you're going to do investigations, you have to explain it. You have to talk about the purpose and the end state of those investigations. I have to tell you that Joe Biden, when you look at what's happening on our border, he's in complete violation of the United States Constitution. So I think it's important that we hold elected officials accountable and let people know that no one is above the law. But you don't make that the centerpiece of your uh, your floral arrangement. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into the commitment to America a little mm -hmm. bit. And what are the what are the most promising components of that that you see? I think it's important that they have the conversation. It, it should boil down to two things, security and freedom. That's economic security, energy security, border security, local security. And, and I think right now those are kitchen table issues. So I will continue to hammer those things, especially when you see what's going on in our local communities with the rise of crime. And I'm talking about violent crime and the bail reform laws that have released violent criminals back onto the streets. But I would also talk about the freedom issue, especially educational freedom, because Parents need to be able to be the ones that decide what is best for the education of their child. And this was, again, one of the reasons why Terry McAuliffe is not the governor. When you stand on a debate stage and you say that parents have no right in the education of their children, that brought out a lot of people that did not have anything to do with politics. So I think that's another point that they want to hammer on is the education issue. Colonel Allen West, uh, great insight. Thanks very much. Thank you make a lot of sense to me. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.